Yes, good morning indeed. It is the Wednesday edition of the Morning Buzz here at 90.3 WMSC, Upper Montclair, New Jersey. I am here today, Amanda Marino, filling in for Tara Cicchetti today, but I'm also joined by Jaslyn Sarpong and Andaji Cruz Rosario and also Matt Bruchet. How are you guys today? Today is phenomenal. Today's Today is great. phenomenal. <laughs> It's really cold, though. I can definitely say that. It's really, really cold. But, you know, every day is phenomenal. Well, you know what I'm upset about is that, like, we have these, like, really nice days. And they're, like, 80 degrees out. And then the next day, it's, like, raining and, like, 50 degrees. And I'm, like, what happened? Like, Like Mother Nature is, like, let me give you a tree. (laughs) And then she's, like, never mind. Take it back. It's, like, a library book. Lend it and give it back. Yeah. That's Jaslyn, what are we going to be talking like, about today? It's like a mix of literally everything. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we got like snow this week. <laughs> Honestly. Don't you dare, Matt. <laughs> but jumping ahead to the show where we got lots of news and entertainment stuff going on. Jaslyn, what are we talking about today? We got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So first up, you know, we're going to be definitely talking about the vaccination plans and where we're headed with that. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, $15 an hour for, you know, dining, recruiting workers. He who shall not be named, AKA Derek Chauvin, what's, what's, he, what's he talking about and a bunch of other stuff. We also got some music news from our very own resident, um, E! News, Music News, still trying to call names Thomas. But you know, first up, you already know, Amanda, what we gotta get into before we get into those juicy stories. We gotta get into the news update with Daji. Daji, what's going on in the world? So good morning. My name is Dodgy here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair and here's your newscast. So details from my peer that last Wednesday protests began in Colombia after their government proposed a tax plan aimed at raising 6.7 billion to pay the country's debts and to maintain a basic income scheme for 3 million low income people. President Ivan Duque withdrew the tax plan on Sunday amid the protests, but large amounts of protests and roadblocks have continued. At this moment, 19 people have been killed. In the U.S. on Tuesday, the defense attorney for Derek Chauvin, who was convicted of killing George Floyd, has requested a new trial. AP reports that Chauvin says the court abused its discretion and he wants a hearing to have the verdict impeached because of what he says is jury misconduct. In August, a former New York Assembly Speaker, Sheldon Silver, was sentenced more than six years in regards to a corruption case at a prison upstate New York. On Tuesday, AP stated that Silver was on prison for a low while he awaits potential placement to home confinement. And with one more story from Louis Biondalillo. My name is Louis Biondalillo, and this is your WMSC News Update. Montclair State students are confused, and it's clear why. Now that New Jersey has legalized recreational marijuana, will the university allow students to light up on campus? The short answer is no, but let's get into it. I spoke with Associate Director of Residence Life, Tara Meller, for some insight into what students can expect with the new school policies. The university is obligated to comply with federal laws, the Controlled Substances Act, and the Drug-Free Schools and Communities Act. While the Garden State has legalized marijuana, the United States has not. Since MSU is a state school, they receive federal funding, and to allow cannabis would put students' financial aid in jeopardy. But that hasn't prevented college students before. According to a 2018 study from the University of Michigan, 43% of college students in the U.S. have used cannabis at least once in their lives. According to the same study, a smaller but still significant 25% of college students use marijuana regularly. The question on many students' minds, if it's legalized in New Jersey, what will the consequences be if they break this policy? Meller compared it to how the university treats an already legal substance, alcohol. If there's alcohol present, our staff would address it and work with the students to dispose of that item and eliminate it from the setting. Due to the new laws, university police officers will not be allowed to respond to calls about marijuana use. Instead, a conduct meeting would be scheduled, leading to university consequences, but not legal ones. A sobering policy for many students. For WMSC, this is Louis Bianta.
My name is. So currently in the Montclair area, it is a high 64 degrees. We are expecting a high 70 degrees and a low 47 degrees with thunderstorms later tonight. This has been your newscast with Dodgy here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. Do you see how it went from like it's 64 and it's going to go to 72 and it's going to go right back down like 40? It's, it's like... Jaslyn, you know what time of year it is? It's like the time where like you have to like wear a coat in the morning and then in the afternoon it's like become summer and then at night it's like freezing again. It's like there's it's like we go through the seasons throughout the day. <laughs> That's what exactly what happened to me yesterday. And it was like I was like in the morning it was hot. I was like, look at me, I look stupid. Then just a couple hours later, I'm going back on campus for one of you know our wonderful, lovely campus events, and it was freezing. Exactly, was exactly. And it it's was like freezing. we're going through that. Gross. It's like we're going through the four seasons and it's not even September. Literally. That's exactly. Uh, right. I just got that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but while Matt's talking, Matt, what is going on in the sports world right now? Well, in Montclair sports on Friday, the softball team will be hosting Stockton University in the NJAC quarterfinals in a best of three. If necessary, the third game will be played on Saturday. The baseball team will also be hosting a playoff game. They're hosting the NJAC quarterfinals against Kane University on Friday in another three-game series in which the third game would also be played on Saturday if necessary. And on Saturday, the women's outdoor track and field team will be participating in the NJAC championship. In professional sports and NFL news, superstar Seattle Seahawks wide receiver DK Metcalf will be running in the 100-meter dash at the USA track and field event coming up. New York Jets defensive tackle Quinnen William Williams is out eight to ten weeks with a fractured foot. The expectation is he should be back mid-July before the season starts. In the MLB, the Yankees play the Astros for the first time since the 2019 ALDS, and the sign-stealing sign scandal came out, and they won seven to three. The Mets were supposed to play the Cardinals due to rain; it got canceled. Today, the Yankees will hope to take down the Astros again while the Mets will hopefully play a doubleheader against the Cardinals. In the NBA, the Nets lost their second straight game against the Milwaukee Bucks, 124 to 118, while the Knicks have the day off. Today, the roles will be reversed. The Knicks will be in Denver facing the Nuggets, while the Nets have the day off. In the NHL, the Devils beat the Bruins in a close game that went to OT with a final score of 4-3. to three. The Rangers have the day off and will play the Capitals today. And today, in sports history, in 1978, Cincinnati Red Pete Rose became the 14th player in history to get 3,000 hits. This is interesting because Pete is the leader for most hits in the history of baseball with 4,256 and not in the Hall of Fame. Let's send it back to you guys. Thank, Thank you, Matt. Matt. Our personal <laughs> we, Stephen A. Smith, like I always say. We say that at the same time, Jazz. We just love Matt's. Matt's uh, commentary on Matt. the sports world. It's awesome. We just love Matt. But uh, let's get started, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's get started. So, Jaslyn, did you know President Biden is aiming to vaccinate 70% of American adults by July 4th? That's a pretty, pretty generous goal. I mean, is it though? I mean, I it, like, I mean, like, I know he was talking about it when we started to open up vaccines for everybody, 16 Which, and up. So I don't know, like, the, he was mentioning, like, July 4th for a while now. So I don't know if this is completely, like, too odd for him to say. So it says, uh, President Joe Biden, this is from AP News, of, of course, obviously. President Joe Biden on Tuesday set a new vaccine goal to deliver at least one shot to 70% of adult Americans by July 4th as he tackles the vaccine problem of winning over the doubters and those unmotivated to get vaccinated. Uh, his administration is also moving the shift from states with weaker demands to areas with stronger interest in the shots. He said, you don't need to get vaccinated, Biden said from the White House, even if, oh, you do need to get vaccinated. I am sorry about that. You do not get vaccinated, Biden said from the White House, even if your chances of getting seriously ill is low, why take the risk? That was a, uh, a direct quote from Mr. President Biden. Uh, Biden's goal equates to delivering at least the first shot to 181 million adults and fully vaccinating 160 million. So, okay. Jaslyn, what are we thinking? Um, well, honestly, like, I'm not going to sit here and hold you. Like, I do understand the doubts. 
um, especially from certain um, communities of color. But that's going to be a whole long conversation Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, if you if you want to go and do some if you know, if you are free to do some Google research and you definitely can just understand. But um, I do want I do understand the importance of the vaccine. And, um, you know, for Montclair State students, we have to get vaccinated. Um, I work on campus during the summer, so I have to get vaccinated before the summertime anyway. So, you know, I always knew it was going to happen. So I kind of just kind of hope for it. And, you know, with the way that this pandemic has been going, the only way to get back to some sort of normalcy, those are the new words this year, normalcy, quarantine, uh, isolation, like those are just buzzwords <laughs> for 2020, 2021. I mean, um, Jaslyn, actually, while you're mentioning that, have you, you have, uh, I guess, with the way you just said that, I'm assuming you haven't gotten your shot right yet? No, not yet. All right. So out of curiosity, like what has been holding you back? Like, it, it's me just ask, asking, like, out of a general curiosity. Yeah, no, of course, of course. Thank you, Amanda, for that question. Um, I feel like I'm getting I'm putting you on the board. spot, Jaslyn. I hope I'm not I should have put makeup on. But um, I think my main issue in the beginning was that, you know, my mother who works in healthcare wasn't pressing to get it. And, you know, I just kind of felt like in the beginning it wasn't necessary because I felt like I was taking my precautions. Um for me personally and you know I didn't try like I've been vaccinated my whole life so it's not like I'm an anti vaxxer or something like that but I understand and I empathize with people who don't trust it because in the beginning like especially you know like I said with communities of color and black people like there's been a lot of discrepancy in the medical field before so it's like you know I don't know if people know this but um the English is escaping me, but there was a point in time in the early 1900s where they told black men that they were getting free healthcare, but they injected them with syphilis so that they Mm -hmm. can test the effects of syphilis um, and see what was going on, but they didn't tell them that. And I mean, you know, and that's just one example of many. So it's like, you know, the trust in the healthcare system is understandable that it's not a thousand percent. And, you know, with COVID, um, a lot of things were uncertain and unsure. And some people, I guess, are just kind of like, even though I know the science behind it, it's not a new thing. Like COVID is not, this This is not a new disease, ladies and gentlemen. I want everybody to understand yeah, this is not I a know. new mm-hmm. disease. It's just a new strain of the disease. Um, I think people have a difficult time figuring that out too, that it's like this, like people are like, oh, how did they get done so fast with it? And that's like a lot of like reasoning behind people not wanting to get it. And it, it's been around the vaccine it's just been for something else like they've been developing it for years and also even if you want to say oh they haven't been developing it whatever the whole world is working on the same thing because exactly. everybody is having the problem exactly and i was even going to say that because i was talking to my dad about it and that's exactly what he said it's like everybody is focusing their attention on this so that's why you could say that and it's a new type of technology to um, my bio major. I had, a bio, I had um, my bio friend explain this to me very simply. So excuse me, it's my science folk if I'm not doing the correct sci- scientific explanation. But basically, instead of injecting you with the actual COVID virus, because that's how most um, vaccines work, they kind of take a little bit of the virus, just to train your body to fight it. It like almost sends you like a picture of what COVID looks like. So the first shot is like, okay, so if this comes back in your body again, attack. Okay. And then the second dose, that's why a lot of people feel really, really like sick. Like they feel mm. awful after the second dose because it's like, okay, you told me to fight it when I saw it again. So it's like what it did. So your body's like, great, that wasn't it. So next time you see it, definitely fight it. So that's kind of what it is. And then, you know, that that's how the vaccine works. No, you're not going to turn gay. You're not going to be autistic. Um, I mean, not that either of those things are bad, but that's not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, I know a lot of people are also skeptical because uh, they think it's going to lead to for women to not be able to have a child. Yes, I read too. And that is also not scientifically proven that that's the case. Um, and they've actually come out with studies now that said that it's safe for pregnant women to take it and to women like since then. So exactly point that out too. So do your research on it. I definitely understand and empathize with people who are nervous Oh, um, yeah. If you're not comfortable yet, you know, until if you're if you're honestly not comfortable, I would definitely say, like, just do your research on it and then you decide when you're comfortable to take it. I um, mean, you kind of weigh in your options. You know, do you feel like it's a necessity? Do you feel like you live with high risk people? Do you believe you're high risk? Like, do take your time and do your research if you have the um, privilege to. 
And like I said, like I definitely understand and empathize people who aren't exactly comfortable yet. So, so Jaslyn, yeah. what do you think about uh, President Biden's plan though to get like seventy percent of Americans vaccinated? Because that's almost that herd immunity. Well, not completely because of ch- children yet, because children can't. But like technically, eighty percent of the American population would reach herd immunity. Yeah, I Obviously, also- there's that's not including kids obviously right now so but it's a lot closer than i think people would think we would ever even get to hurt him i was gonna say that i definitely see that and i definitely agree with that i was scared because i was like i was 19 when we got into the pandemic i'm now 21 like okay <laughs> i was like it's time it's, it's time um i'm like it, it's time and so um for those of you confused about doing the math birthdays in april i was 19 it was march okay uh but i was 19 i'm 21 like it's time so you know i feel like it's it, like i said i still feel like it's a little generous but i do think that i do know a lot of people have already started taking it like when it first came out like a lot of people already started taking it and we have three different vaccines so i mean if he's expecting like fully vaccinated i still think it's a little generous but like at least one dose i, I think it's possible I I am more curious too because I'm I'm seeing his plan of how he's trying to do this because I was like, well, how is he going to do this? I mean, like it's like because if people are not getting it now, what's going to make them want to get it in two months or whatever the case may be? Um, and I did see that he's trying to plan like a lot of states, and I've noticed this specifically with New Jersey is that New Jersey is trying to get um more walk-in centers so people don't mm-hmm. have to make the appointment so they could just literally walk in and get the vaccine and not have to like sit online and like book appointments whatever uh and i also know i feel like they're trying to reach out to more people that might not know it's available to them because we were talking about this yesterday a lot of people i think think that's going to cost them something or Mm -hmm. they don't know where it's readily available and things like that like if we look at more of like the homeless population and things like that and that's that's the people you need to reach because they're not they're not the ones that are more aware of that that it's not going to cost them anything and things like that Exactly. And I was going to say, like, minus people who aren't like, you know, people are lazy. OK, let, let, let's just call a space. Fit. People are lazy. So, you know, I work in a lot of, you know, customer service esque type of positions. So if you don't do it for not do it for them, but if you don't give them a streamlined way of completing a task, they're not going to do it. Like that's that's just, it is what it is. So, you know, for them to have a walk-in center to make it more readily available, um, I think that's also really, really important because if you have people sitting online for more than 20 minutes trying to make an appointment, they're not going to do it. Oh no. Like that, that, that's, that's absolutely. I know a coworker of mine that literally was like, I was going to go get it. And then every time I was trying to get it, like the the world wasn't like wanting me to get it. So I've just decided like for now, I'm not going to get one because the world apparently doesn't want me to have one. And I'm like, but like the universe said no, because like, I'm like, well, you got to like put a little more of an attempt in that. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. there, you can't just like decide, Oh, I'm going to try once or twice. And if the world doesn't want me to, then I'm not getting it. Like that's, that's not, that's ridiculous, but that's how most of the population thinks. A lot of students think that way too, because they're like, if things are not coming instantly to me, then it's not supposed to be, you know? Didn't I I said like people, if you don't do bam, 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 bam. Like, and if you, if something for your friend, faith without works is dead. Okay. If you don't put the work in, the faith is not going to come. Okay, so just just for Amanda's friend. Hi, Amanda's friend. That's what you got to do. So that is back to the point. I feel especially students. You're right. Like, like I said, if you don't do something easy for students, they're going to ignore it because their mind is filled with so they see so much on a regular basis. So if they don't if you don't do it like, okay, you put this in this box, you type this in this box after you type this in this box, you click send. And then there you go. If you don't do that, they're not going to do it. Mm-hmm. So I think making a more streamlined way of them to, you know, get the, be able to get it is important. The homeless population, I know there's a lot of people who are concerned because I think you need like a social security number um, or something like that. Like there's ways to sign up on mom where you don't have to get it. Um, a lot of a lot of people are really are also curious that like when you go to vaccine centers, like what do they ask for? Because some people are like, well, what if I don't have this? And like, they're going to ask me for it for proof. Like a lot of like, I mean, I know my instance was a little more rare, but I think I had, I only had to show my health insurance, but that was literally my site. I know some sites that literally were like, you want a vaccine? Like, cool. Go for it. Like they were like, they didn't even ask for proof or anything like that because that was just how it was. And there were some that only asked for a driver's license or there were some that some, some proof of ID, like just something you don't necessarily need to show 
a social security card. You could show something else that shows you're living. You know what and I mean? You're alive. You're, you're not alive a and this is who you are. But even a lot of times, they, I know a lot of Facebook groups and stuff we're talking about, you didn't need a lot of proof. <sighs> there you go. Okay, I thought you were going to say something else. Because when you say Facebook groups, it's a trigger for me. No, I know like... Facebook groups because there's vaccine fa- help Facebook groups and stuff. Oh, okay. Like that. Okay, okay. Um, so, this is like the anti-vaxxer moms who are like, you no, know, no, not the anti-vaxxer moms. My kid's gonna get autistic and lesbian. And I'm like, I mean, <laughs> neither of those things are bad, but okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyways, yeah, this is gonna be something to look forward to to see if this actually happens, especially before July 4th. I know July 4th and heading into summer, people want to go celebrate, they want to go party, they want to go have some kind of level of normal and last year at this time like summer did slow down last year but we still have to be cautious we still have to be careful obviously still wear your mask if you can um and yeah and be safe like really that's really it that's all i could say if you if you feel safe you should maybe get a shot if you're interested in i don't know <laughs> my psa <laughs> just, is if say, you like, can and, do and your research your... that's gonna yeah. be my psa do your research if you if you feel you're able to like do your research on what shot can you can and stuff like that but also that doesn't mean you can't stop washing your hands just let please know. wash your hands i don't know why that was a thing that wasn't a thing beforehand what like, wash i know hands? that's what i was gonna say jaslyn i went to the i went to a restaurant the other day and the woman in the bathroom did not wash her hands and it really bothered me because i'm like pandemic or not like come on that's gross <laughs> it's gross it's gross <laughs> People needed to wash their hands before this. So, I mean, like, like, just be safe. That's going to be the PSA from WMSC. Be safe. I was, I was appalled at the amount of videos I had to see of people teaching grown people to wash their hands. Okay, uh, guys, you got to say your ABCs together. Like, <laughs> well, you are 30. You are 30. You are 30. Wash your hands. <laughs> Anyways. But speaking of restaurants that I was just mentioning about going to a restaurant, Jazz, what's going on in the that. restaurant industry in New Jersey? I like that segue. All right. So a New Jersey owner banks on dining surge offers $15 an hour to recruit workers. Now that is huge. And I will explain to you why in a second. So shout out to NJ.com for this article, right? So even before Phil Murphy's, Governor Phil Murphy's announcement on Monday that in that indoor dining capacity limits have been lifted later this month for later this month. Prominent New Jersey restaurateur Tim McClune was already banking on a big summer as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to decline. Thank the Lord Jesus. Um, I think there is some pent up demand, McClone said, quote, people want to get out and some people have a little extra money in their pockets, end quote. Uh, warm weather means more outdoor dining and on may 19th indoor capacity limits at restaurants will be eliminated social distancing between tables will still be required obviously um which means some spaces will still be operating at less than capacity um so and uh mr McClune said that he's offering 15 dollars an hour to employees who don't receive tips to lure workers okay now this is huge for me because i was um looking at the history of why tipping um, was important. Um, well, I saw a TikTok that to me counts as a history class, okay? So <laughs> I was looking at this TikTok about, you know, why tipping was really a thing. And it was mainly for like migrant workers and former slaves to find work and kind of for a way to still take advantage of them. So they didn't have to pay them, but, you know, under the guise that they're going to get tips. So that's why even to this day, they still make what, like a dollar or some change an yeah, hour? It's like $2 an hour and it's and- like, yeah. And, you know, just under the assumption that they're going to make up the tips. And, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. That sucks. So that's, that's why I always tip. Even if, you know, you had a terribly attitude, I will still tip you because I understand you have to eat and live. So um, this really, really is important to me because I know a lot of restaurants in Europe do this. Like a lot of places don't even accept tips because they pay their workers a livable wage. So I think that this is amazing. And I feel like all restaurants should do this. Because now you've turned it the kind of, and I feel like um, like a lot of Uber Eats and DoorDash drivers, right? Again, um, I watch a lot of like TikTok videos and they say that a lot of people have started not picking up your food if you don't offer a tip. And I understand that, but I understand why if somebody's DoorDash books, you know, you know how the jokes, they're like, you know, if somebody, if somebody's food order is like $2 and they end up paying like 15, I don't want to have to spend extra money that I don't have to. So I understand 
people who choose not to tip either because they can't afford it. So I feel like this kind of eliminates that, but that's Here's just kind of my, my opinion. With that. Like, cause I know this is talking about the whole tipping thing. If you can't afford to tip, don't go out. That's just, that's just the thing to me. Like I understand, like you could go pick up your food. You could go, you don't have to, nec- I feel like that's, there's the line because a lot of times more recently, like restaurants, if you go pick up the food, there's like the option to tip, even though like they didn't really serve you. And, and like, it's- if you can't, I feel like that's an, available option where you could do that you could go in pick up your food whatever but like to have someone deliver food to your house or have a server come and you spend a lot of money on your dinner and then you refuse to leave a good tip that's just ridiculous to me yeah Um, no i agree with you but like what I like about this is the fifteen dollars thing is like we've been seeing a lot of that in the media right now especially with the pandemic going on and people working these crazy hours and they're only getting paid like 10 bucks and they're dealing with these Karens and they're coming in and they're just like making their life miserable, miserable. And the fact that they're getting paid this unlivable wage is ridiculous. Jaslyn, I want to tell you, I, so I, I'm not going to complain about my work because I make a decent amount of pay from my job, which I'm thankful for. I know not everybody's the same way with like working at like a retail like establishment, but um when I was living in Pennsylvania at my old college, I got paid seven twenty five an hour for minimum wage for my job that I held on campus. Seven twenty five didn't go up, didn't go anything for two years. I worked at that job. Seven twenty five. Yeah, because the minimum wage, the the price of living is different in Pennsylvania than it is oh. in New Jersey. It's cheaper to live in Pennsylvania than it is in New Jersey. Um, so, like, obviously, prices of things are a lot cheaper and things like that. But seven twenty five is what some people were making, and that's only gone up like a little bit since then. <laughs> like, and that's just crazy to me because even in like that kind of place, that's just showing you how like the minimum wage is just not enough. Like, luckily, and I was you- a college student; I had other income coming in and whatever else. But like, that's not a li- like some people might be only making a dollar or two more than that. And that's not livable. You know, it, you know, if we could spend an entire morning bus episode on arguing with people about minimum wage and what people don't understand is minimum wage, literally the minimum, the minimum amount that you need to survive. It's not like people have it in their heads that because for so long, minimum wage has not been that. So people have it in their heads that's like, oh, you're not supposed to get a minimum wage job if you want to survive on a decent income. Uh, yeah, you are. That's the purpose, you know, for, for survival. That, that's and the purpose of minimum wage. People and people don't take into account that minimum wage really hasn't gone up because of inflation. No. Now, I'm not a finance student, so I can't explain inflation that well to you. <laughs> but it's like, if you go back, like if you kind of propor- proportion it and you go back in time to how the cost of living, like just put it like this, someone in the early 1900s was able to go to school which was go to was able to go to college off of a minimum wage job just just to put that into perspective and i know well, we this get into college I, college is like a whole different thing that i could like exactly. totally we should go on a whole morning buzz of just finances of that you know minimum wage we could talk exactly. about how we're trying to so get we do the work so and you don't people, have to. like freak out too like no the, the yeah, I understand people get upset like, oh, why should I be paying someone when they all they wanted to do is work at McDonald's? But guess what? At the end of the day, someone has to do that. And, and that's, that, work. And that's, so that's not even an excuse to me. because at the end of the day, you still eat at McDonald's, right? Yeah. So what's, what's the problem? It's like the, the services that you judge and you criticize are the, still the ones you use. When you're going out on a long day, A, like, well, don't you want McDonald's or some other type of fast food place? And you know what? You know what? The other thing about working at a minimum wage, guess what? The other idea is that you're probably working another job on top of it. Even people that are not working minimum wage. I'm talking like, (laughs) think about how teachers get underpaid and how like they're making some places like 30, 40,000, maybe. And like, obviously there's some places you're, or like if you're going through a private school, yeah, you might be making a lot more than that, whatever. But like, there's people that are making like 30, $40,000 and that is it. And they have to work these minimum wage jobs because they don't make enough money. The amount of teachers that bartend or work in a, like a restaurant because they can't afford to just make their salary and And people complaining about it. And it's like, well, because they have to work two jobs already. And by the way, if you are a teacher or working in education, it is sad that you have to work two jobs because it is such an important career 
And like, I know everybody that would be an educator listening knows that, but to anyone that doesn't know that it's so important. And if you don't have teachers, you have nothing. You literally have nothing there. there. And it's like, girl, Amanda, you got me started. Okay. <laughs> the jobs and these services that people are so quick to judge, like the arts, minimum wage jobs, uh, sanitation, uh, cleaning. The ones that you turn your nose up at are the ones that you require on a daily basis. Think okay? about this last year, Jaslyn, how we required them more than ever. 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 And then all they got were some claps. No, give them money. Let them live. Because I don't care what nobody says, okay? They're literally, minimum wage jobs are not simply for a high school student. No, there's people who need, like the, <laughs> because I don't like how people treat poor people or low-income people. I don't like that because at the end of the day, the services that you judge and you turn your nose up at are the services that you acquire on a daily basis. If you didn't have garbage men, you were going to have to go, do you want to go crush your garbage yourself? Okay, you go and do that. You judge fast food workers. Why don't you get a real job? Then I, I guess you're not going to have McDonald's anymore. No more Mickey D's for you. Okay, no more Burger King for you. Can't have it your way, right? You want to turn your nose up <laughs> at, at, at- So good, Jessica. Like you can't have it your way. Sorry. You want to turn your nose up at, at restaurant workers and service. Okay, okay, go back to the kitchen, go pick up your food yourself. Okay. It's like the, the people that you require and people don't even realize it. And you just you're so quick to turn your nose up. And then you want to argue that you don't feel like they deserve a little wage. The money, I'm not even gonna get into that. The money that you're spent, you're already spending a lot of money on, it's going somewhere. It's just not going to them. So yeah. it's like it's going somewhere that it's not needed because they have too much money in that section. You know what I'm talking about, Amanda. Mm -hmm. They have way too much money in that budget. So if they cut that and disperse it correctly, but it's because people are money hungry. They don't want to do it's that. The whole idea too during the pandemic that people were saying like, don't stop buying from Amazon and like buy from like an Etsy shop if you're buying a Christmas gift or something like that or buy from something because it's, it's going at least to a person that is making things homemade or needs to make extra money or whatever. Exactly. I don't know but, this whole this whole I'm 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 excited for this restaurant because I'm hoping this does a lot more you know what where, where is this restaurant is, is I've, it, is I've around eaten here? here before actually at multiple of their uh locations is they're, there one around here I'm, I'm gonna they're go more by the the shore mostly oh, um okay. but they're awesome and I I love uh I loved going there but I, that's actually like great to hear like I'm mm -hmm. hoping that like other restaurants continue to do this too and because we're seeing right now in the world in well specifically in this country or specifically in New Jersey if you look at it too not a lot of people want to raise this minimum wage and if maybe some people start to do it on their own it'll lead to that my job starts at 15 dollars an hour but yeah. it's like, it's certain places. My job doesn't. But then again, I work on campus, so I can't really complain. Well, yeah, that's a little bit of a different story. But like, yeah. the, the, like, I'm hoping that maybe this will start like kind of like a spark for other places to kind of continue on with this. Treat your workers with respect, guys. You know, it's, it's important because we need them. You know, especially yeah, and, I think, and I think, and I think. It's not taking away the tip idea. You could still do the tips for the wait staff. Um, but even if you wanted to eventually take that away, I don't think a lot of people would be opposed to that. You they know? wouldn't like maybe, care. Maybe like giving waiters $15 an hour too and then taking the tips at the end of the night and still giving maybe a chunk of it back to the restaurant and then splitting it the rest between the wait staff and the host. That would be a good way to look at it because then you wouldn't be splitting you're because you're like as waiters, a lot of times you are splitting it anyway. You're splitting it with the bus boys and things like that. And that's not, again not livable especially if you're only making like a few bucks off an order so yeah. i don't know Amanda, this you should open up a restaurant no i should not i can't cook <laughs> I, I i will burn everything <laughs> i'm so weak. like it's not even an exaggeration i can't cook at all like i would as i was i'm told, slowly because, learning as i was I realized the other day uh i would probably burn cereal um which is false How? but like i like i could make a bowl of cereal but i would let's just say i did almost burn something in a residence hall here though when i was cooking one time amanda is the reason why we have 10 fire drills a month ladies and gentlemen <laughs> she's the reason why the probably, fire alarm goes probably, off 10 times off. probably but anyway we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back we got some more news well, jaslyn what are we talking back talking about after the break we're talking about voldemort aka Derek chauvin <laughs> 
<laughs> Stay tuned here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, New Jersey. And welcome and welcome back to WMSC 90.3 Upper Montclair. You are now tuning in with Jazz and my favorite, favorite producer on the planet, Amanda Marino. Oh, I feel so honored. <laughs> All right. So uh, before the break, we said we were going to talk about he who shall not be named, a.k.a. Derek Chauvin. Um, and we're going to get right into it. So um, for those of you who don't know who Derek Chauvin is, please get out of the rock you're living under. And <laughs> if you weren't, um, he last summer, um, he was responsible for the murder of George Floyd by kneeling on his neck while the world watched for nine minutes. Um, he was recently convicted. Um, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison and he was convicted guilty on three counts. But it's looking like this man wants a new trial. So we're going to go look into that um, right now. So this is an article um, by USA Today. Shout out to y'all. And it kind of goes into his thought process. So the article reads, the defense attorney for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin on Tuesday requested a new trial after Chauvin was convicted in April of second degree murder and other charges in the death of George Floyd. May he rest in peace. Attorney Eric J. Nelson says in the motion that Chauvin was denied a fair trial for reasons including, quote, prosecutorial and jury misconduct, errors of law at trial, end quote, and that the resulting jury's verdict was, quote, contrary to law, end quote. This is my favorite part of this article, ready? <clears throat> Chauvin, comma, who is white, comma, <laughs> was convicted in April of second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter for pressing his knee against Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes as the black man <laughs> said he couldn't breathe and went motionless. That's not funny, okay? I'm, I'm I just, just think- more laughing at right now, the, the unintentional murder, sure. <laughs> okay. That's why I said, okay. <laughs> But basically this man um, says that he was unfairly charged. That's, that's what this, what, what, what do you think, Amanda? Honestly, hearing about this new trial thing doesn't surprise me. He is allowed to appeal. Um, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know why he's bothering. Again, the whole world saw this and he was obviously uh, proven guilty, not just once, but three times. And it was given three, you know what I mean? Like he wasn't just like given the one and then it was like, well, maybe he can get out of it. It was, it, it was three charges. So like, what is he going to help himself? Maybe getting out of one charge, if anything, if that even happens, but like, you know, I, I don't know though. Again, the whole world saw it. That's the I thing. Think- had major evidence that was thrown into play. You know, a lot of other times, like we don't have this video evidence and I'm not saying that those times were right either, but this time the whole world we were watching you. How many weeks we saw that video getting played on news and media outlets, and like we saw it. It was there was no like mistaking the incident, and there was three other officers or two other officers that were standing by that did nothing else either. Absolutely nothing. So it, it's it's really I'm laughing because. It's the audacity and the privilege for me. Yeah. Like you, you, and, and I'm laughing to, to keep myself from crying. You really took somebody's life. You took justice into your own hands. And I will say this time and time again, it is not up to police officers to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Your job is to take the person to jail alive. The only time you should ever think about pulling a gun is if the person is shooting back at you. Mm-hmm. The man should not be dead. And it, and it, and it, and mm, mm, I'm not even going to answer it because I'm going to, I'm thinking about that whole incident too that just happened recently with the taser thing and like the being a taser and a gun. That little girl did not deserve that. And, mm-hmm. you know, to just get into that quickly, because a lot of people feel like, oh, she had a knife in her hand. That she was going to get jumped by a grown woman. And it, that was like the second or third time that that woman has come to her house trying to fight her. She was trying to protect herself. The knife was, even if, even if it was, if a boy can shoot up a church with an with an AR rifle and make it out with a vest and was able to be taken to McDonald's after his arrest, I do not care what anybody has to say about that, okay? It is not your job to be the judge, jury, and executioner. It's not your job. And it's like people were trying to, because like, um, like I said in last week's uh, or two weeks ago um, show, he was an adult film actor. So people were trying to shoot his character. Down. I'm like, is that your business? Absolutely not. 
apparently people were trying to say, oh, he did drugs. So, do you know what I also saw last night, Jaslyn, when I was looking and I saw this story as well um, about the appeal? Did you hear the story about one of the jurors? They were saying that there might be a problem with one of the jurors in this trial. That they were saying, oh, like, he was attending a George Floyd rally prior to the thing. And I'm like, why is this coming out now? First of all, the decision was already made. Um, Technically speaking, they pick a diverse group of people for a Mm -hmm. jury to, so it's a fair trial. Um, They're not all going to be straight white men and they're not all going to be like, I don't know, female, whatever the case may be there. It's just how it is. They have to pick a diverse trial because then it's, it could be, you know, skewed the result. Um, so like that was also coming out last night too, which I was like, what is this? So I don't know if that's going to come into play. I only saw it one in one place and I don't even remember. It might've been like AP or something, but so that's, I don't know if that's going to all come to light now too. I don't know what's going to happen with that either. I feel like this, this is just, it's, it's like the day that he got convicted, it was like, yeah, you know, it's great, but it really wasn't enough because that was one person. And then that same day, a little black girl died. So it's like, you know, it, it's just a lot of audacity. And it, it, again, it, it kind of tells people that black lives are disposable. And at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to prove. If you're trying to defend this in any type of way or any of those murders in any type of way, you're trying to say if someone isn't bone straight, perfect, following, and even when they do that, they still get killed. If someone isn't straight up has no type of past if you're black and you have no time if you have a past if you've made mistakes if you were stupid if you were drunk and decided you wanted to sleep in your car instead of driving home if you were uh, giving a false 20 dollar bill which we never even found out if that was really a counterfeit 20 dollar bill if you're jogging in a, a white neighborhood like if you're doing any type of activity your life is disposable and if you're not following the law or being the perfect law by a citizen, your life can be in danger. And that is not okay. So the fact that you have the nerve to sit there and be shocked when somebody tells you you got shot, like the way this man looked, like I can imagine under his mask, his jaw just dropped. Like the way you had the nerve to look shocked, you know what you did? That was such a meme though too. Like, you, you know? It really was. <laughs> um, you know exactly what you did. So it's like, it's 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 like, well, why are you shocked? And so- And- this is so I found the stuff that I was talking about with that other part of that story. Um, so it was reported in a bunch of news sources. It, I just pulled this one up from Yahoo News. Um, so this guy, Brandon Mitchell, um, w- who was in the jury for uh, the Derek Chauvin trial, said there was a recent like picture that surfaced up on him on the Internet that said uh, he was at a rally last summer uh, during the Black Lives Matter protests and stuff. And it said, um, the shirt said he was wearing a shirt that said get off our necks in a commit um a commitment march last um i don't know where, it last august in washington dc mm-hmm. so obviously that surfaced and that surfaced yesterday of course when Derek chauvin is trying to appeal on this trial mm-hmm. and it's like first of all to me again like i said okay so what they have to pick a diverse trial it's not like again saying that everybody in there was maybe for like you know what i mean like they didn't all go in there with an agenda they had to listen to the evidence that was the point they all didn't have like it wasn't i don't know i know i could probably go on and and i'm I'm not a law student or anything but like it's just common sense that like they're picking a jury that's diverse of people that some of them might have already said and when they were going in there, yeah, I don't like this guy. I don't like Derek Chauvin. Look what he did. And that's just probably common sense. But there was probably also people that maybe were more for his side going in there too, but then changed their mind. That's just how it is. That's the point of the trial. Not everybody's going to be for or against when you're going in. That's the point. So I don't know that I feel like that's going to be that's going to be an interesting thing that comes up, too. And also because it was a black man as well, that's going to be interesting to see what they think of this. Um, and I think and, and what I'm going to say is they shouldn't think anything of it. It was a <laughs> year ago. And again, you're supposed to pick a diverse trial. But anyway. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we could talk forever and ever about that. But, you know, we got to go back. To, we got to throw it to my favorite music man the one and the only he gives us the news thomas how are you doing i'm doing great i always love the introductions you guys are always so nice to me oh yeah of course uh, of course i always feel so welcome 
What do you got so, for us? What's going on in the music world? Well, in upcoming album news, pop duo Ali and AJ will be releasing their fourth studio album this Friday, May 7th. And it's titled, I love ready them. for this, A Touch of the Beat Gets You Up on Your Feet, Gets You Out, and Then Into the Sun. It's a what bit a of a mouthful. Title. Blank Very title. Much. The duo, who is made up of sisters Allison and Amanda Michalka, were well known in the mid to late 2000s with their third album, Insomniatic, released in 2007, containing their most successful single to date, Potential Breakup Song. Yes. The sisters, were, the sisters were encouraged to release new music and an entire new album after they released a re-recorded version of Potential Breakup Song, but with explicit lyrics just last year, which blew up on social media. The album will mark the duo's first studio album in 14 years and will contain a total of 12 tracks for a total runtime of just under 47 minutes. In more album release news, J. Cole will be re- releasing his next duo album, The Off Season, next Monday, May 14th. Oh, I think I got the day wrong. No, my bad. Next Friday, May 14th. Sorry about that. Via an Instagram story post last week, Cole announced, quote, just wrote through the city to the off season. Too excited, end quote. Cole officially announced the album's release just yesterday, May 4th. The last album Cole took part of was 2019's Revenge of the Dreamers 3, a collaborative compilation album with his label Dreamville. But his last solo album was KOD, released three years ago in April 2018. And in Music Award news, the Grammys announced there will be rule changes in the voting process, specifically the elimination of secret committees of 15 to 30 select music industry peers to decide on nominees for nearly all categories, including the big four awards for album, song, record of the year, and best new artist. The change will be made effective immediately for next year's Grammy set to take place in January of 2022. The Recording Academy will also require 90% of its voting members to go through a a requalification process this year to, quote, ensure that the voting body is actively engaged in music creation, end quote. Which is good. This is, I'm I'm laughing so hard at this because I know why and we could touch on it after you finish, Thomas, but oh, that's so funny to me. Oh, good. I'm, I'm almost done with it. I knew this was going to be a, a big a big discussion with us. But also, two new categories will also be added. Best Global Music Performance and Best Musica Urbana Album. The latter of the two will be the fifth award in the Latin music field, meaning more awards will be awarded for Latin music next year than for pop, rock, rap, and country, which will all have four categories each. All right, so that's what I got. Okay. Uh, let's, well, let's get started before- with the before we get into the Grammys real quick, I do want to remind people with the Ali and AJ thing. That is really cool. And if you didn't know, here at WMSC, we did an interview with Ali and AJ about January or February now. And that's something that's available on our socials and all that stuff. And that you might hear if you're listening to our station often. So that was something that the music team brought to us. And uh, yeah, it was an awesome interview that they did at the beginning of the semester. So just want to shout that out they're great people ellie and aj but anyway let's continue let's talk about the grammys because i want to talk about the grammys let's talk about the grammys let's talk about the grammys. um so for anyone that doesn't know the weekend started some problems that he wasn't nominated which i don't blame him because like what he was nominated at all these other award shows and then the grammys just snubbed him from everything and a lot of that stirred up controversy and so what are we what are we thinking (laughs) so you know i used to be a huge huge award show buff um i feel like you you seem like a huge award show buff like (laughs) a lot of people a lot of people say that because my my mom used to love award shows so every time like the grammys this lady doesn't watch broadway musicals and she wanted to watch tony awards i don't know what she got from it but you know does she She just like to see the performances that's what she yeah she's she's like that like she she loves the super bowl because of the i mean the big game because of the performances i don't know it's just uh, she's 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 very you know love that lady but she's strange so she loves award shows she loves dancing with stars she loves all that so I grew up watching a lot of award shows. So I just grew to love them on my own, specifically the BET Awards and the Grammys, um, because th- I knew those two, I would most likely hear like something like oftentimes like the Oscars, like the Golden Globes, like the shows or the movies that that were, I would have no idea. So I would, you know, just do it. It's I think Evelyn, it's like you're adding to our conversation that me and Tara had last week with Tom, Tom really? about the whole Oscars of people not knowing the movies that were nominated. LOL. Oh, yeah. So anyway, continue. You know, and I know it's I know, I understand it's not going to all be based on popular selections. I get that. You have to also give credit to the creativity. But I also feel like it's time to be freed from the shackles of like the 10 old white men sitting in the corner picking and choosing albums of the year like I feel like it's it's necessary to give it a whole new revamp and I think that you know um 
I believe that The Weeknd's a great artist. Um, not too, too big of a fan, but I do feel like, you know, musically he's, an, he's talented. And I feel like he was right to kind of stir that up because, you know, if you don't question things, people are just going to kind of sit back and just be like, well, I don't like this, but I'm not going to say anything. He, oh, he just wanted to say something. He felt like he deserved a Grammy. So he said something. And I feel like lately the Grammys, like, I don't know. I'm not even going to get into that either because I feel like the Grammys before it used to be, you know, the, the highest of the highest honor. And all some people getting some Grammys, and I don't, I don't really feel like they I mean, deserved it. But it's it brings up this whole conversation again that I've noticed it a lot in the arts, and I'm um I follow a lot of theater artists too, and it's the same thing kind of in the theater industry right now that people don't want to go back to what was. Because a lot has happened in this last year, especially. And I'm not saying that things hadn't happened prior, but a lot of things have happened specifically in this last year that we need to hold people accountable. We need to do things that are like changing the way things work, because if we don't, it's going to stay the same. Exactly. That's just how it is. And there's been been saying the same thing about theater. Like, I don't want to be part of this theater industry unless like something changes and unless something is like everybody's like, I saw one a great post yesterday that said literally unless everybody's sitting a part of the table too and gets to be a part of this and I think that's a great way to look at it with the music industry especially like why wasn't the weekend considered I mean especially if every other award show was like he's great he also was did the big game this year like why was he good enough for all of that but somehow not good enough for the grammys that's where that's where my like question is like the logic and yeah I'm not the biggest weekend fan either but you have to still realize that you see a trend everywhere else and then somewhere in the Grammys. And why weren't those other awards options before, by the way, like thinking about why these eligibility of more Latin awards and things like that. And I already think it's weird that we only do the pop awards at the show. And especially there's a lot of other music that people listen to and it's not presented at the Grammys and it's just all in the pre-show and you have to watch the pre-show if you want to see any of that. I do think it's, it's a really good decision to have, like 90 percent of the people that are voting you know go through the requalification process oh, for sure because like jazz brought up very good point that it's just a bunch of old white people making <laughs> old in a white room, men locked making, in a closet for, yeah. making decisions like and no. if they hadn't noticed the industry has drastically changed since it was you know all straight white men you know what I mean? If that makes any sense too, like exactly. there, it, the, mm-hmm. you need to change based off what is happening in the industry. And like, if you're all only listening to like, I don't know, Justin Bieber, I don't know. Like I'm making up something. It's like, like, yeah, it's just, like even Justin Bieber himself has changed. So it's like, and, and you, you don't know, even get me started on him. I hate him. <laughs> I know. Oh, don't do, you know, peaches. Um, but you know, I was going to say like, when it comes to these award shows and things like that, like, and when you said a lot has changed, like in the entertainment industry in the past year, it's like, it's not so much that it's changed, but because of quarantine, like I was talking about with my dad about this, it's, it's literally just forced people to pay attention because they literally had no other choice. Yeah. Like it's forced people to pay attention because what are you going to do? You can't go outside. So you have to pay attention to what's going on. And that's when a lot of people were pushing a lot of their messages out, which worked effectively because I feel like it had, honestly, I'm proud because a lot of messages have had a longer lasting impact than I originally thought. So, you know, it's like, you know, the entertainment industry, they're like, yeah, people are like, yeah, I deserve this award and I'm going to say it. You know, some people were a little bit more ambitious than others, but it's okay. The message still got across, you know, you know, some, you know, even though you're a white boy with dreads, but you know, it's okay. The message still got across that you know it needs to be changed the the awards process needs to be changed and I and I know a little bit about what Amanda's talking about with the whole theaters issues like I see a couple of them and yeah it needs to be changed it's the the diversity issue of not having enough diverse casts and stuff but it's also about there's a lot of producers and people that are abusing their casts and stuff too and it's just yeah. it's just a lot of it came out in this last year because again like you just said Jaslyn there was nothing else to do. That was the only thing that was coming out. And here at 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair, New Jersey, it's important to talk about and to make changes. And I'm, you know, I'm glad that the Grammys is going to make a change. I'm hoping that that will be better. There shouldn't be these underground, like, Hey, like we're going to talk about this and this person's going to win that, 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 that's, that ruins all the fun. That ruins the point of why we watch award shows. It should be more of either a surprise or we not expecting it. And it should be fun exactly well it seems really shady to have committees in the first place of just 15 to 30 mystery people 
Yeah, it is. Whatever. And guess what? Those committees are probably all white men. <laughs> They're sitting Straight there. white men who listen to pop music. Like, but, then, but then the Grammys are like, oh, we, we don't know that. They're secret. Ooh. Yeah, but they just announced that they're they were getting rid of the secret committee. <laughs> well, um, secret ones though, it's okay. Secret okay. committees are just are worse than regular committees. It's like, what's the point? That makes no sense. Oh, I just have a voting general body. Yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I, I <laughs> the whole thing is like ridiculous, and I don't know. I'm hoping that we see a change. Honestly, I'm really hoping for that. I'm hoping that we could see a change in the entertainment industry and i know it seems like it might have not been as bad in a place like entertainment but it is and we should hopefully we'll hopefully we'll be part of that change so i agree yeah but uh i guess that's it for today thank you thomas for bringing us the best in music thank you always. for always bringing us the best in music <laughs> um this has been the Wednesday edition of the morning buzz i was amanda marino filling in for tara Ch- Chichetti. I couldn't even say her last name today. Tara, you heard that? Tara you Chichetti. heard that? I hope you're listening. <laughs> I love Tara. She knows that. Um, I was filling in today for Tara, and I was joined, of course, by thank you, Jaslyn, for having me. Jaslyn Serpong. Was it, did I say that right? Sarpong, yes, you Sarpong. said that right. I'm yes. a fabulous sidekick, always. And of course, uh, we had Daji and Matt joining us as well. And uh, we hope you all have a great day and stay safe and have a great rest of your day. Bye, y'all.